Hello, it's time to think about garden design for 2015. Hello again. So for the garden design for 2015, I'm taking my inspiration from the Alan Titchmarsh series, How to Be a Gardener. And I'll put it on the link on the, the link on the screen right now and in the doobly-doo down below as well because personally I think it is the, I'd say, beginner and intermediary guide not just in plant design but in every aspect of gardening. It's probably the best gardening series I've ever seen anyway so I'd highly recommend that. Anyway, as you've seen in previous garden tours and you're going to see today um, things ended up being very higgledy piggledy last year everything little bits of things all over the place so next year the plan is to change all that and keep things much simpler now for this area this area is going to be um, the area where um, what are they called? Runner beans, yes. They're going to grow. And they're going to grow up here, up this fence. Because you can see just how much bare fence um, you can, uh, you know, is here. And that makes the garden feel smaller. It doesn't draw the eye up to the sky. If this was covered in greenery or some other kind of plant matter, then it would draw the eye right up to the sky, you know, making the whole thing feel a lot bigger. So we're going to have runner beans, uh, and it's going to go runner bean, sweet pea, runner bean, sweet pea, runner bean, sweet pea. It should end up looking really beautiful. And then when we come down here, we're going to have um, marigolds and sunflowers right at the front. Obviously, everything here will have been taken out. We've already taken out um, some bushes which were there. The roots, you can see, it, um, are the only things left there now. And uh, we're going to end up, as I say, marigolds, dwarf sunflowers. There's a dwarf sunflower called Little Leo, which we're going to grow. And Echinacea purpurea, which is going to be... Um, what they call spotted, so there's going to be a little bit of it here and there, just to draw the eye, not too much of a, uh, of a form necessarily, just drawing the eye up uh, to the runner beans and sweet peas, which will then draw the eye up to the sky. So, let's move on to the allium bed, you can see we've got some celery growing quite well there already um, and this right up here up to um, the rhubarb um, which you can't see at the moment but the rhubarb crowns are in the ground and they will come through um, the rhubarb right up to the end there will be uh, alliums probably two or three rows of leeks and um, uh, a couple of rows, well, probably four or five rows of onions, garlic, and there we are. Coming forward, between the rhubarb and where the mint is, um, I'm going to, when I take this all over um, again, uh, the mint growing underneath will be quite restricted. And... Um, yeah, it would be quite restricted when I um, dig it up and the roots underneath would be cut off and it would be restricted to the, you know, a smaller bush. Um, and therefore the mint up to the root bar will be the successional leaf area. Um, now if you don't know what successional growing means, um, successional growing is... Uh, you know, I don't want all my lettuces to come at the same time, basically. So I'll sow a row. Two weeks later, I'll sow another row. Two weeks later, I'll sow another row. And that's going to be the bed for that. Um, after the potatoes have come out, actually. 
this area initially, this area here where all the leeks are at the moment, will uh, be turned over to potatoes uh, initially. But then once the potatoes have come out, it's going to be a sea of peas. So that's the first half of the garden we talked about. That's the garden design we're aiming for. Fairly simple, allium bed, pea bed, successional leaves, you know, and, uh, and the, uh, a bed for drawing the eye up and flowers. Uh, much more simple than it is at the moment. Um, and uh, I'll show you the second part of the garden right now. So on this side of the garden, we've got the container area, which is going to be a hell of a lot more well organised in the summer than it is now. <laughs> and uh, we'll uh, have, we'll be able to sit out there and have to be surrounded by strawberries and peas and all that kind of thing. So there we go. Over here, we've got the rose border. I want it to have a whole border that is just dedicated to, pl to flowers. We've never really had that before, so we've transplanted the two rose bushes which were over there, which are on the other side of the garden, and we've now put them in here, we've pruned them, and it's all going to be rose bushes all along this side. So all up this side, and this small fence here will hopefully be completely hidden by rose bushes and yet we'll still be able to talk to the neighbours. Um, so the other flowers, once um, these baby leeks have gone that you can see, and once the weeds have gone as well, um, the other flowers will be um, uh, small nasturtiums, little tom thumb nasturtiums, similar to the stuff we had last year, and we're going to have love in the mist in there as well, Nigella Persian Jewels, which is a beautiful mixed colour version of it and has this, um, it's a very nice uh, kind of, what would you call it, foliage I suppose, very nice foliage to it, um, Cosmos as well, and we're going to have some dahlias in here just because they're what my dad used to grow, so out of, out of respect for him. And I think that's something unique about plants, isn't it? That you know that you can have these um, things which remind you of other people. Now the wind's getting up, so I'll be qu I'll be quite quick. Um, I've probably told you before. This area here is going to be a time lord. We're levelling it off, and we're going to add more soil in there as well. It's going to be. It was a bit of a danger before when we had um, a grass lawn here. So we'll have a time lawn instead, um, levelling it off as I say, and we're going to have a bench right at the end over there, um, right in front of the bushes as well. So that just leaves this bed here. What's going to be in this bed? So the Three Sisters farming method is a very intensive farming method, I believe Victorian. And the principles of it are that you save space by growing things close together and you save having to weed as well. And what they do is they grow um, sweet corn and then they grow runner beans up the sweet corn. So obviously it's saving space, you're not having to use a pole. gherkins, uh, all of these around the uh, sweet corn and we've had a problem last year with our pumpkin plant where um, it didn't get pollinated and I've heard generally that across the southeast of England there are problems with attracting bees and other pollinating insects so we're trying we're going to put in some plants which we think will attract the bees um, and they'll pop up again because of the design things that I spoke about earlier. They're going to pop up in amongst the squashies, and um, they'll be asters and 
uh, poppies as well. There's a beautiful poppy called um, Paper White Cloud, um, which is exactly what it says. It does exactly what it says on the tin. Um, so that is the garden design for 2015. Thank you for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. That would be very much appreciated. And give me your comments as well. What designs have you got for your garden? What are you thinking of doing for this year? I'd love to know. Please let me know. And uh, as, if I haven't said it already, the Garden Report tum Tumblr link is both on the screen now and in the link down in the doobly-doo. Thank you for watching. I'll be back tomorrow. Goodbye.